Okay, welcome to this episode of Financial Freedom. We are talking about a tough topic today, credit and debt. So, let's get to it. Uh, brief disclaimer, here we go. Credit and debt. So, three things we're going to talk about today. Assessing loans, figuring out what different types of loans we have available to us, what are loans, which loans should we take, which ones should we not take, what's involved in taking on a loan, uh, credit score, and then how to attack loans and get rid of them once you have, if you elect to get loans, how to get rid of them. So first off, a little story that I learned about when I read a personal finance book, he referred to this and I thought it was really appropriate. Plato's allegory. So if you look at these two pictures, you'll see what looks like people that are chained up in a cave looking at a projection. And this guy parlayed it into personal finance, and I think it's really true. It's the idea that if you look around, you see a lot of people every day that are going to work, coming home, driving there, driving back sitting in front of a computer, they've got student loans, they've got car loans, they've got home loans, and they're just going through the motions in debt, paying off their loans, hoping they can get rid of all their debt and waiting for retirement. And it's just a miserable existence. Um, I think the first thing that I would say to you as you're considering going out there and getting loans and making big decisions that have implications for what options you're going to have, since this is all about having options and financial freedom, is, is this loan going to be something that helps me towards what I feel is a success? And is that by my own means and my own terms? Or is this something that society has dictated on me that it has deemed successful and once I'm actually realizing it, I come to the realization I'm locked in the cave and I can't get rid of these chains. And that's the debt and the burden and the stress and the frustration that I find a lot of people feel when they have a tremendous amount of home, car, student, credit card debt. <clears throat> talk to your parents, talk to people that are 30, 40 years old and and uh, hopefully they'll be honest with you. And if they aren't feeling that way, then they know a lot of people that are. So let's get ahead of that right now. Talk about that so that you don't feel that way. So thinking about loans. Um, first off, what is a loan? Well, it's when somebody gives you a agreed upon amount of money at a certain interest rate. Sometimes it has a time maturity for you to pay it back like 30 years Sometimes it can be an infinite time period uh, where you have to pay minimum payments because they like accruing interest on you. That's like a credit card, okay? So why do people get them? Usually the reason people get them is because they don't want to use their own cash to pay for something or they don't have the cash to pay for it. Um, they think that they have a better use for that cash or they don't have the cash available for them. So different common forms of loans that people get is house loan, that's a very common one, student loan you're familiar with, car, credit cards. Those are the main ones that um, that really come to mind that I'm most aware of. I'm not a big borrower. Um, so what purpose is the, is the loan serving? That's the question you wanna ask yourself is, is this loan something I really need or really, really want at the expense of something else. Because when you buy something now that you can't afford, you're really going to pay for it over the duration of the future with interest. So you're gonna pay more than you would have paid up front over the course of time into the future. And in the process of paying that off, you're not gonna be able to buy things and do things that you'd wanna do in the future. So you need to ask yourself, what is a good loan and what's not a good loan? Uh, an example oftentimes, in my opinion, of a good loan is a loan that's going to increase your earning value. So as you consider going to college and assess whether you should get student loans, 
you should ask yourself, what kind of return on my investment am I getting? How much appreciated income potential do I have in getting this student loan? If you're getting 200 grand in student loans to get a sociology degree from a Ivy League school, I, I don't know what a sociology, and I, this is from a former sociology teacher, but I don't know what a sociology degree qualifies you for as far as earning potential. These are the questions you need to ask. If you're getting an engineering degree and you're getting $50,000 in student loans, is that going to generate significant increased annual income? Those are loans that are increasing your future earning potential, and that's a good return on a loan that you're being lended to you. Um, most loans don't generate increased revenue for the borrower, a.k.a. you. Uh, the cars, houses, credit cards, those are purchases that you can't afford, that you've elected to borrow someone else's money in the process of getting it. So do you need the newest car? Do you need the nicest house? Do you need that whatever it is TV you bought with the credit card? Uh, usually the answer is no. Um, there are stages in life. It's the beauty of the lending system where people are going, okay, we're ready to have a house. Make sure you're aware of the interest rate and the monthly payment and take into account what your future earnings going to be so you don't put yourself in a bad situation where things are tight. Countless people I know, things are tight when they buy a house. They love the house, but they don't love the monthly payments and all the things that come with it, along with the new car, along with the credit card debt that they have to pay off. And now um, they're in the cave, chained up, trying to figure out how the heck they got there. So... Be aware of what loans you're considering getting and the interest rate. Uh, interest rate, just for a, a brief primer, is an annual amount that you're paying in addition to what you're paying back to them. So if you have a 10% interest rate and you borrow $100 each year, annual percent rate, APR, you're paying $10 in addition to the $100 you're trying to pay off. And each passing year, that percent accrues on top of itself. So if you don't pay it off quick, it can start to become a hefty amount. So make sure you're aware of the interest rate when you get a loan and decide in the process of getting a loan how much you need or really want that thing that you are electing to buy with that other person's money because you are committing yourself to financial payments for the foreseeable future. And Rarely do you benefit financially from that uh, unless it's increasing your earning potential, okay? So credit score. I'm somebody who thought credit scores are relevant. I don't even care about credit score because I don't want to borrow money. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of borrowing money. I think I've already made that clear. But credit score is important. Uh, fortunately, my wife had a great credit score. Otherwise, we might not have been able to get the house at the great low rate that we did. Um, I wasn't exactly aware of small uh, minutia within credit score on how to build an ideal credit score. There was a medical bill that was a small amount from a few years ago that got flagged out of nowhere that I wasn't aware of and that dropped my credit score uh, 100 plus points at a critical moment. So things to be aware of. Why do you need a credit score? Well, having a good credit score tells people that you are a good candidate to get a loan. If you're not a good candidate, you won't be able to get a loan and you won't be able to borrow to be able to get a house, a car, or the aforementioned things from the last slide. So having a good credit score is important in the critical moments if you want to be able to buy a house at a younger age or borrow to buy a car if you're not going to pay for it in cash. So ways to build a good credit score is to pay off any types of loans or debt that you have currently on time at the monthly interval. If your name is in a house, uh, in your apartment or if your name is in a credit card, if your name is on different things that you have monthly payments on, that's going to be building good credit. Not allowing anything that you've borrowed in the past to go past due is going to build good credit. All of these things are going to make it easier for you to get a better interest rate if you want to borrow in your future, which most of you will. A uh, little bonus slide, credit card versus debit card. Um, 
a lot of people think you have to have a good a credit card because you need to build good credit. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with that, but I find that having a debit card is a useful tool rather than a credit card and most of the purchases because it's being directly drawn from your bank account and you know I only have this much money left. I only have this much money left. I don't want to go past the amount of much money I have left because I need to have sustainable purchasing habits. With a credit card, you can just blow out how much money you have in your bank account and it's irrelevant, right? You just have a minimum monthly payment. And if you're not very aware of your spending habits, then that can get you in a precarious situation that happens so, so often. And usually credit card debt comes with a lofty interest rate. It can be in the high teens or above, meaning on $100, you're paying maybe 20 bucks on that $100. So as you get into the thousands and tens of thousands, which many do, that can be um, a difficult hill to climb. So on most of your purchases, I advocate a debit card. If you want to get the points from the credit card, this and that, rarely does that pay off more than the money you end up paying in debt in the process of using a credit card. So be aware of what's working against you and the minimal things working for you. The reason they set up all those incentives for credit cards is so people say, oh yeah, we should use a credit card. And they know that people are going to slip and not pay off their credit card in time and they're going to make money off you. So if you want people to make money off you in the credit card industry, then spend your time using a credit card. But um, I would always consider using debit over a credit in most instances. Okay, attacking debt. Now you've got debt, okay? And you're sitting back and you're going, okay, I've got multiple loans. I've got a car loan. I've got a house loan. I've got student loans. Maybe I've got credit card debt. Um, a good way to go about this process is to look at your different loans, like on the table seen on this screen, and go, okay, this one carries a high interest rate, credit card. This loan is a little bit less. Then you've got a 5%. Now we've got a 4.25%. Now we've got a 4%. The number one loan to attack on this list, without doubt, always pay the minimums on everything else below the top interest rate one and get rid of the top interest rate as fast as possible because that money is working harder against you than the other money. 20% is accruing a higher amount of payments with each annual turnover, and you wanna get rid of that as soon as possible. So attack the highest interest rate. Pay yourself first. We've taught you how to pay yourself first. The minute you get your check, Take part of that money right now and start putting it towards the highest interest rate loans and pay off the minimums of the rest of them. That way you're chipping away at each of your loans at the highest interest rate first. If you keep with that habit, then you're going to be able to take care of your debt in due time, assuming you don't put yourself in a bad debt situation. So that's my um, advice. The other thing I have included in here is celebrate your small wins. As you pay off different loans, go out to eat. Tell your spouse, tell your family, tell your friends, hey, I only have 10000 left. I only got 5000 left. I just paid off one of my car loans. And go out and enjoy it because you are making the steps to become financially free and not have to deal with that. And now you're in the green. And now you're in the process of investing and making money. So that's the goal. So just to rehash, think about the different types of loans. Do you want to put yourself in the chains? Do you want to feel the weight of having, oh man, I got to pay off all this money. Okay. Is it really worth it? If you need to start an apartment, if you need to get a used car, if you don't need to buy that good, then you might thank yourself in the future. Build your credit score so that you're able to buy a house the day that you want to buy your house and your spouse comes to you and goes, we really need this house and you got to be able to buy it. Okay. And uh, then when you have, if you have different types of loans, attack the highest interest rate first, pay yourself first. The minute you get your check, prioritize getting rid of your debt. That way you can take a